Oh my god. Breath of the Wild. If you haven't already seen the trailer, just go and watch it now. Stop what you're doing. Stop this video. Go and watch the second trailer. This is going to be one of the best games of all time. We just got another trailer and it's time to break it down scene by scene. What did we see? Right, so this trailer seems pretty daunting to analyse, there's so much new stuff. But if we break it down, there are 16 individual scenes that we'll look at. So without further ado, let's look at the first one. Okay, so the trailer starts off with a parchment animation, very, very similar to that which was used as the prologue for Skyward Sword, where the backstory of Hylia and Skyloft was told. It's interesting that this parchment, which seems to be telling the story of the Sheikah, who are closely related to Hylia, is very similar to the parchment shown to tell her story. Anyway, the parchment shows the Sheikah eye, notably at first without the trademark teardrop initially. Surrounded by swirling patterns that I've pointed out are very similar to Joman pottery designs. The teardrop then appears and falls to presumably the ground with a splash, which then seems to give life to a set of large, twisted trees which look like willows. The trailer then fades to actual in-game footage of trees, possibly hinting that the Sheikah are responsible for the plant life here. Notably, this shot looks like it could be an autumn shot, perhaps confirming that the game will have a functioning seasons system. We then go back to the parchment, which shows some very primitive, cave painting-like depictions of presumably ancient Hylians or Sheikah. The one on the left is holding an axe, likely for woodcutting, and then there's the one harrowing the ground in order to plant crops, then one nurturing a small plant, and finally a horse, which seems to be being used to harrow the ground. Okay, this scene takes place presumably around here on the world map, due to the presence of the Twin Peaks here, and this resurrection tower which we can pin near Death Mountain. There's nothing particularly notable in the background, except for a ruined guardian at the bank of a lake. There's a man walking along the large bridge, and judging from his large pack and spear, I'd say he's a travelling hunter. Next up, a combat teaser. We see a blue Bokoblin, which are obviously the slighter tougher versions of the basic enemy jumping at Link, who's equipped with a new shield design as well as a large pack on his back. And interestingly, there's a white-haired NPC fighting alongside him who's dressed very similarly with a similar shield and pack on his back. Maybe this is a side quest and Link is travelling with this man. Now we see the first structure of a new sort of civilization, the same people we saw depicted earlier in the parchment who I'll tentatively call the Primitives. You can see the giant horse's head made out of what looks like wood. This is very similar to ancient humans in our world who'd make giant effigies of things important or sacred to them. It makes sense that the horse would be something they'd respect and worship, since because they're primitive, the horse is an incredibly powerful tool for use in travel, work and even battle. There are a few more cool details in this scene, such as a woodcutter's axe in a tree stump on the right. At this same location we see a few new characters in the distance, but we don't get a proper look at them until the next shot, where a man with dark, long hair rides in on a horse. It's too difficult to make out anything important about him, except that he has long, dark hair and the trademark Hylian ears. He's riding towards an old man, who, judging by his scholarly pose, could be some sort of village elder. We also see a small farmer-looking fella at the back here, as well as a skinny man behind the horse. This scene links these people to the primitive people we saw in the parchment earlier, since they have the same cave painting-like artwork painted on the canvas on the side of this building. They again depict a horse, showing just how important the beasts are to their culture. In this parchment scene, we see a depiction of a city, with four residents dotted around. Judging from the design of the houses, which are similar to the one we see later in the trailer, it's possible that this is some sort of large settlement of the primitive people. There's also what could be Hyrule Castle in the background, though that could be a stretch. And now, an important shot, an overview of one of the primitive villages. This is a long shot, so there's a lot to talk about. We'll take it slow. First off, the most important thing about any Zelda game, the cuckoos. We can see Breath of the Wild's cuckoo here on the right. I wonder how this will affect the story and the timeline placement. Just behind the cuckoo, we have a willow tree, which is interestingly the same sort of tree it appears the Sheikah Tia helped grow at the start of the trailer. On the left, a small farming area with some sort of crop growing. As the camera pans, we see more of the village, including a small pond, a 
another few farming areas, and what looks like a chieftain's hall at the end of the town by a set of waterfalls. It's probably been built on this high ridge as a form of defence, acting as the village's stronghold, suggesting that these people fear attack from something. It's this hall that looks similar to the buildings depicted in the parchment. And now the camera fades to the end of the village, looking back up at where we came from, and we get a good look at a primitive house, as well as a small hut, more farming patches, and two people tending to their crops. Okay, now it gets interesting. First off, we see Link, in his standard champion's tunic, but is there something different about him? Yep, Link's got the Master Sword on his back, and what's more, it shows no signs of the rust or decay that it had on it during the E3 reveal trailer. So this confirms that at least some portion of the game will be spent repairing the blade and restoring it to its former power. Next, some sort of Birdman leaps into the air in front of Link before soaring up towards some sort of giant mechanical bird ship. Wait, what? Let's slow that down. The first thing that probably came to everyone's mind when they saw this man is the Rito from The Wind Waker. However, you just have to compare the two to see just how different they are. The Rito are actually far more humanoid than this new race of bird people. This new character looks entirely avian, while the Rito have human-like legs, arms, eyes, and a mouth under their beak. Something interesting to note about this Birdman is his bow. While looking at the footage, I couldn't help but notice just how familiar the bow looks, but couldn't put my finger on it until I remembered these stone structures present on the Great Plateau. They're both based on the Hylian Crest, which shows a Loftwing's spread wings. Could this Birdman have some sort of connection to the Hyrule Royal Family? It's worth noting that a very similar character appears in the later gameplay footage with Bill Trinan, a travelling minstrel known as Cass. They share the same very avian design and similar robes, though while it seems that this bird might be a foe, Cass seems very friendly and helpful to Link, giving him clues on where to find a shrine. But Cass has the same trousers, same feet, same green ankle bracelets, which makes me think that they're the same race. Weird. Another connection with these bird people is what's seen on the walls of Castletown in Twilight Princess HD. For a really in-depth look at the carving scene, check out this video I made, but what's notable is that it depicts similar bird people. They're very different to the Rito, but very similar to this new race of bird people. What this could mean is unclear, but it shows that they were known during Twilight Princess, and are in some way connected to the Gorons, Hylians, Oka, and the Triforce. But this is all a theory for another day. Anyway. Birdman then flies up towards a giant flying vessel in the sky, and I reckon you've all guessed what this thing is, it's the UFO we saw a lot at E3 from the Great Plateau. In case you weren't aware, from the plateau a huge, flying, moving object could be seen in the northwest. It seemed to move of its own accord, but we never got a good look at what it was until now, and when we get a close up it's… Sheikah? What? It's covered in Sheikah designs. However, even more worryingly, Instead of the blue or orange glow that quote unquote good Sheikah tech has, such as the shrines or the Sheikah slate, it has the reddish pink glow of the evil Sheikah tech like the Guardians. I've done a theory before that this highlights tech under the control of the Calamity Ganon, which also glows this colour, so perhaps this giant bird mothership is under the control of Ganon. That's a scary thought, but it would make an absolutely amazing dungeon, which is what I'm putting my money on. Next up, we go back to the parchment with a depiction of Hyrule Castle and a legion of guardians. It does seem like the guardians are defending the castle, which would support the theory that they were built for this purpose, but were corrupted. And now we see Link battling two guardians on horseback near a resurrection tower, notably with the bird mothership appearing in the distance. He narrowly avoids a laser and jumps over some ruins on his horse, before taking a huge swing at one with a heavy axe. This is very similar to the battle we saw during the Beyond the Plateau footage at E3 2016. Maybe this field isn't a very safe place for casual horse riding. Ooh, and now a very interesting scene. We get an obviously female character holding something in her hands, walking slowly forwards. She has a similar pouch to Lynx on her hip, as well as ornate blue clothes. This character is obviously quite important, but we'll get to who she is later. And now, an absolutely awesome cutscene showing what the Calamity Ganon's effects on Hyrule Castle look like up close. Purple lightning and giant balls of fire are being violently thrown out from the castle. Getting to Ganon isn't going to be a walk in the park. Here, at the foot of Hyrule Castle and the Calamity Ganon, we see a completely ruined town, with the Calamity's weird spore-like spikes torn around the landscape and its purple energy simmering in pits. 
But is this just any town, or have we seen this before? Could this have been... Twilight Princess's castle town? I think that's absolutely the case. Take a look at this shot of a fountain, notably the Hylian crest in the centre and the circular area for water, as well as the stone steps around the edge. Then compare it to the fountain in the centre of the town square of Twilight Princess's castle town. They're the same location. And then, if you weren't already convinced, look at the red flag here. It's the exact same as the flags that decorate the town square. The Calamity Ganon has completely, absolutely flattened Twilight Princess's castle town, and this shows the desolation in its wake. Next, we have Link. Presumably early on in the game, judging by his equipment, a soldier's broadsword and another basic bow, glowing with some sort of magical energy right next to a structure of Sheikah design. I'm not sure what to make of this, although it does seem similar to what happens when Link receives a hero's charm at the end of a shrine. Perhaps it's something connected to that. And the trailer's final shot is a brilliant one, Link kneeling next to a woman in some sort of well-kept castle. He has the Master Sword on his back, so it's probably at least midway through the story. And I think the woman he's kneeling next to is the same woman we saw earlier, none other than Zelda herself. She's obviously important, probably royalty. I say this because she's facing away from Link, so they're looking in the same direction. Link is kneeling before whoever is standing just behind the camera, suggesting it could be someone important like a King of Hyrule, but Zelda isn't kneeling, suggesting she has a similar rank or similar influence to whoever it is. Additionally, the stone floor and wooden door behind the two are clearly in a good condition, suggesting this takes place in some place relatively untouched by the chaos caused by Ganon. And if this character is Zelda and is the character seen here, could what she's holding be none other than a Sheikah Slate? We know that she's communicated to Link through his Slate, so it would make sense for her to have one of her own. Oh, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and if you haven't already, consider subscribing. What do you guys think of the new trailer for Breath of the Wilds? Leave it in the comments below. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.